Today we're going to look at copying files to and from using PowerShell. Now, here we have a file that we're going to use for our test purposes, and we're going to open up a new PS session. Now, for those of you coming from Linux world, you'll be thinking something like uh, SCP, similar principle. So here we're going to open a new PS session. We're going to put it into the variable, and there we now have a connection to our server one. And if I do a get PS session, I can see that the session is actually open. Now we can go ahead and explore that a little bit more by, as an example, we can now run an invoke command. Uh, we can tell it, hey, use the session. This is the name of my session. Uh, this is the script block I want you to run. And I'm going to give you a command. Now there's going to be no response from this because ls in this particular example is going to run against the directory of the user and that directory is empty so there's no output. But that could easily be a different output that could be something more usable or tangible. Just giving you an example that you can use invoke command. So let's do a different one. Let's go ahead and connect to our machine. So we do an enter ps session. Uh, name of the session. So again we're using our session here. So we're not creating a new one. We're just logging into the existing one. And as previously stated the ls returns nothing because it's an empty directory. So I'm now going to go down to the root of C and just show you the output. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I've got a test file sitting on the C disk here and I've got the test file sitting in my test folder on my current machine. So what I want to do is copy the files back and forth. So I'm going to take the file from the remote machine and copy it to local and vice versa I'm going to take the local machine and copy the file to the remote one. Now important thing here if I open up a new PowerShell session and just do a PS session, you'll see that the session doesn't exist. So everything I'm doing is within this terminal. If I change terminal, it's different. So I'm going to go back out, so I'm no longer directly in that session, but I still have my PS terminal open. I'm going to run the copy uh, item command, and then I'm going to tell it the path of the file. So in this case, this is the file that you want to move. So in this case is now the one locally on my machine. Then I have to set the destination. So this is going to be the location on the remote machine. And finally I need to tell it which direction this is going. So this is the part where we have a dash from or to. So in this case we're going to use the to session and then the name of the session. So I'm sending the file from the local to the remote. Now, same principle in reverse, if I use from, and then we're now sending the file from the remote machine to my local machine. So here I now need to put the path of the local, and I need to change the other one to the path of the source, which in this case is the remote. And we run that again. So what I've now done is copy the remote file to the local file. Now the remote file was empty, so there's nothing in here. So Sadly, that's a bad example, but my local file does have text, so I can now go into the remote session again. So I just do a, again another enter PS session, and what I'm going to do is go check the content of the file that I've just copied there. So if I do another ls, you can see we have the new file that I created, so from remote, and I can do a get content to prove that the content is actually there. Um, this does take a little while to type out, I probably should have sped this up, sorry for that. But as you can see the content of the file exists, so the copying from one location to the other has in fact been successful. Now since we did open up this session and we've been in and out of it, um, probably we should look at also looking at how to close sessions. So you can get a PS session and you can see where what the session is, and the command for closing them is remove PS session. Now you could give an exact session ID, or you can use the piping like I have to close all of the open sessions so you don't need to think about it. 